pray and then God has mercy and God will deliver um, Judah, God will deliver Israel and they will backslide again. Now you read Jeremiah chapter 14 and the verse number 11 to 12 and it says something. God is speaking and he said, the Lord said unto me, pray not for these people for their good. It's not everybody you can pray for. You know, there are times somebody will bring you an issue and you hear the Lord is telling you clearly, don't pray for the person. It's not everybody you can pray for. So God is telling Jeremiah, don't pray for these people. Then verse number 12, he says, when they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offerings and an oblation, I will not accept them but I will consume them by the sword and by farming and by pestilence. Then you come to Jeremiah chapter 15 and the verse number 1 to 3 and he said, Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward these people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. So now God is saying that Jeremiah, if you prayed for these people, I will not answer your prayer. And he said, even a man like Moses, if he stood in front of me and prayed, I will not listen. And Samuel, I will not listen. Now, what this thing tells me is that there are people on earth who when they pray, it is different from the rest of us. Jeremiah's prayer is different. And then, um, what is the name? Moses' prayer is different. And then Samuel's prayer is different. You know, yesterday there was um, something I was discussing with somebody. I, I've forgotten who the person is. And I told the person, um, I have to be here this morning. You know, um, I was summoned to be here, I think, two days ago or something. I was just told I have to appear here. Somebody said, who told you? There can only be one person. So don't even ask me that. So <laughs> I was summoned to be here. But I was supposed to do something this morning. And... I cut this short and I was running away and they said, so where are you going? I said, I'm going somewhere, but you know, there are some people, you don't want them to pray against you or pray about you. You, you don't even want to be their prayer topic. Uh, I will advise you don't be their prayer topic. I remember several years ago, I was in Archbishop's, um, I used to live in Papa's house. Anytime I came from Borga to come, and, to, come to Accra and uh, I would live in the house. One day I heard him praying some prayers. Those were the days um, some of the, some, some other pastors were here. So I heard him praying some prayers. And I said, what prayers are these? He comes against something and something, let them be cut off, let them. I said, hey. And by the way, you don't want to go near this. No, you don't want to, you don't want to mess up around this kind of thing. So, but God is saying that Moses... And Samuel, even if they stood in front of me here, I will not listen. But the encouragement about this thing is that people, it means that whenever you stand before God and pray, God hears. God hears prayer. And he said, it shall come to pass, if they ask, where are we going? Say to them, those that are for death, number one to death. Those that are for the sword, number two to the sword. Those that are for farming, number three to farming. And those that are for captivity to captivity. That is a pattern of four. Now, I told you that four is the number of God. Four also represents um, God's creation. So you have all this about north, south, east, and west. And then you talk about the winter. You talk about summer. You talk about autumn. You talk about spring. You see four occurs a lot in God's creation. In the Garden of Eden, four, ga four rivers, four river heads in the Garden of Eden. And the material world was created on the, the, the completion of the material world was on the fourth day of creation. When God created the sun and the moon and the stars, okay? And the, the fourth commandment is the commandment of the Shabbat. When God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So four stands as something that is for creation, something that is for God, the well-being of a human being, that when God wants to bless a human being, he just uses this number four for perfection, completion, creation, the, the, the power of God for creation, God's name. Now, so the devil also 
uses that number four when he's electing agents or he's appointing situations to destroy. Now you see that God in the verse number three uses some four elements or agencies of destruction. He said, and I will cause them, I beg your pardon, and I will appoint over them four kinds. I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord. The sword to slay, the dogs to tear, the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. This first service, I'm going to talk about the sword and the dogs. And in the second assembly, I'll be talking about the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth. So for those of you that are in the, this assembly, look for the tape of the second one. And the second one, they will have to listen to what I'm going to tell you now. But God is talking about four agents of destruction that he's going to bring against the people of Jerusalem. He's going to bring these against them because they have sinned against him and they have done evil. What the devil does is that when the devil moves, he moves by using counterfeit sometimes. So God does this and the devil creates a counterfeit. At times too, what the devil uses, that what God uses, the devil mimics it. So he will produce a replica, a, co a, a copy of it. So when God says, I will bring against Jerusalem, I will bring against them the sword, and I'll bring against them the dogs, and I'll bring against them the beast, and I'll bring against them the fowls of the heavens. The devil also uses the same to attack us. Okay? So the devil uses the same for to attack God's people. Um, you will notice that four occurs a lot in spiritual warfare. For example, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, number one, against powers, number two, against the rulers of darkness of this world, number three, and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, number four. Then Jesus said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, one, scorpions, number two, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, all the power of the enemy. And then nothing shall by enemies hurt you. And don't make a mistake about this. That word nothing does not mean nothing. That word nothing means nothing. That means that the things that are not named, the things that you have not seen, the things that are in the world to come, powers and forces that are unheard of. That is the word nothing. So over there we see four again. And then you read in Joel chapter 1 and the verse number 4, and it says, that which the locust has left, the palmer worm, that which the palmer worm has left, the locusts have eaten, that which the locusts have left, the canker worm have eaten, and that which the canker worm has eaten, has left, the caterpillar has eaten. So over there again, we see 4. But in Jeremiah chapter 15, the verse number 3, we are seeing four kinds of agencies that the devil uses to destroy. But over here, of course, he's saying God will bring them against the people of Jer Jerusalem. But I, I'm just telling you, it is the same four that the enemy will use or the devil will use against any group of people he wants to destroy. Number one is the sword. Number two is the dogs. Number three is the fowls of the heaven. And then number four is the beast of the earth. Let's start with the sword to destroy. Now, you notice that Three of them are animals, the dogs, the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth. Those are animals. But the sword is not an animal. The sword in the Hebrew is herev. And it stands as a symbol of judgment and violence. And it is a, a metallic weapon that people use for war but the word actually means drought it means desolate 
it means to destroy it means to decay it means to dry up it means to slay and it also means to kill okay now the other three are dogs fowls of the heaven and the beast of the earth but the sword is an object you used to fight ne nevertheless i've never seen a sword which is walking about in town killing people flying in the air it is human beings that use the sword so actually when god says the sword god is talking about a human being behind the sword and of all the evil yeah you can do that you can clap bishop james i will say is free of charge now of all the four that are listed the human being is the most dangerous of beasts if you want the most dangerous of animals don't look for a lion a tiger snake no human beings we are behind all the swords we are behind all the bombs we are behind all the traps we are behind all the witchcrafts and the divinations and the enchantments so he said the human being wielding the sword to destroy now there was a man in the bible by the name of job and in job chapter 1 from the verse number 13 something happened in the life of job job's children went to eat and to drink in their elder brother's house and while they were eating and drinking the Bible said that a man ran out of the place where they were eating and drinking. I'm reading from verse 13 to 22, so keep the pace with me. And when they were eating and drinking, a man ran from the, from the, from the field and came to Job and said that the asses and the oxen were plowing and they were moving together. And then the Sabians fell on them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped to come and tell you. The Sabians fell on them. They've taken the asses away. They've taken the, the oxen away. They've slain the people. Out. They've slain your servants with the sword. I'm the only one left. And whilst he was just speaking, there came another and said, the fire of heaven, the fire of God fell from heaven and has burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped to come and tell you. And whilst this man was speaking, another one came and said, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. And they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. I only am escaped to come and tell you. That was not all. Whilst he was just speaking, another one came and said, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell on the young men and they are dead and I only am escaped to come and tell you. Now, you see the pattern of four again. The Chaldeans attacked. The fire of God fell from heaven. The Sabians attacked. And then the wind of God, or the wind from the wilderness, also attacked. And when the wind attacked, it hit the four corners of the tent. I pray that any assignment of the sword against you this morning, we withdraw the sword. We, we command the enemy to withdraw the sword in the name of Jesus. I pray that any sword of the enemy against your servants, against your wife, your children, your husband, we, we divert the sword, we, we command the sword. I like something Jesus told Peter. He said, Peter, take your sword and put it back in the sheath. Put your sword back in the scabbard. Don't use it. We command the enemy to withdraw every sword. May every sword be withdrawn from your life from your family any sword that has been released this morning we terminate the assignment of the sword in the mighty name of jesus we terminate it and when the enemy releases the sword 
the thing that we use against the sword to fight against the sword is the prayer that we pray the prayer that we pray prayer stops the sword from executing its assignment in acts chapter 12 the verse number one to five we are told about how herod stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church verse number two and he killed james the brother of john with the sword verse number three and because he saw that it pleased the jews he proceeded further to take peter also then the days were the days of the then were the days of the of the unliving bread okay then and when he had apprehended him he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarter nines of soldiers to keep him intending after easter to bring him forth to the people verse number five peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And we know that later on, Peter was freed. The angel of the Lord came to, to on the scene and freed the man of God. We pray in Jesus' name that as we pray, any sword that is intended against you, may God send this angel to deliver any man, any woman under the sound of my voice today who is a target of a sword, if you can scream the loudest scream, you are releasing some power upon your life. So he said, I will appoint over them four kinds, the sword to slay. But there is this interesting character. There is this interesting character called the dog. The dog. The dogs to tear. The dogs to tear. I want to get out of our way quickly and then we'll pray. The dogs to tear. That is the second one. That word dog is the word kelev. And it means to attack. It means to attack. And when you see it in the Bible, it is used of a person of low status. A person of low status. It is used for a male prostitute. It is a symbol for uncleanness, profanity, gluttony, scavengery. That is what the dog represents. And it represents also destruction. Now you look in the Bible, and the Bible has many things to say about, about, about the dog. The, the dog is a very interesting thing. I went and preached about a dog somewhere. And when I finished, one of my daughters went to her house. She had a dog, and she drove the dog away. She said, you are evil. The pastor says, you are evil. I've driven you away. Now, I'm not saying go and drive away your dog. I have dogs in our house, okay? We have dogs in our house. And dogs are my friends. I, I carry them. I, I play with them. They, 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 yeah, you know, I talk with them. I have conversation with them, you know, and things like that. So don't go and throw your dog away. Now, the animals I have in our house, I talk to them. Um, I remember... We had a, a cat, and the cat became pregnant. But there was no male cat in the house. So I had to ask this cat, who impregnated you? And I, I went and I, I told the cat, I, I, I carried the cat, I put the cat on my, my shoulder, and I said, so the cat's name is Bridget, okay? So we called that cat Bridget. I said, Bridget, who impregnated you? You have to tell me because there's no male cat in the house. So how did you become pregnant? Where, where, where did you go? I was here. No, where did you go? You know, so I, I talked to the cat. The cat never disclosed. But she went on ahead and had uh, little ones and so on and so forth. Then, you know, I talked to, talk to animals. Then I have these small fishes. One of our daughters too from Kumasi brought us two small fishes. And they put them in this little aquarium in one of the living areas. And um, then one day, something happened, and then one of them um, fell out of the water. I don't know whether she, he jumped, whether it's a he or she jumped out of the water, fell down, died, and it was left of one. So I came home and I asked, where is the other small fish? They said she jumped out and then fell it it jumped out let's use it 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 will be safer so it jumped out and fell and died so i 
I went to the second one that was left. I said, I want to advise you. Your sister died. Because your sister jumped out of the water. I want to warn you. Don't jump out of this water. Because if you jump out of the water, you are also going to die. And, and I was very serious about talking to the fish. Now I'm telling you this so that you don't go and drive away all the animals from your house because you are saying they are evil. Okay? Now, but the dog is a mystery animal. You read your Bible in um, Revelation chapter 22 and the verse number 15 and it talks about the dog and it said, but without the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the whoremongers, the murderers, the idolaters, and whosoever love it and make it a lie. When we speak about these animals, sometimes it is the devil behaving like an animal. Sometimes too, it is human beings with animal instincts. There are some human beings in this world, they and animals, there is no difference. So, in Philippians chapter 3 and the verse number 2, Paul was writing to the Philippians, he said, beware of dogs, beware of evildoers, and beware of concision. There are some people in this life, the difference between they and dogs is not clear. That is why I told you that, that word dog can represent many things, scavengery, profanity, immorality, wickedness, sorcery. Oh, the amount of sorcery that dogs can manifest is amazing. I did a study on the dog and some studies show that it can hear about 100 times, 100,000 times more than a human being can hear. The dog is amazing. The things it can see, it can smell a cancer. A dog can smell a cancer. A dog can smell somebody's mood. Dogs can do so many things. They, they, they can smell somebody's mood. They can, they can, they can. You know, in, in some of you, you grew up in Accra, these nice places, so there are things you don't know about. In my village, when the dog is barking in the night and is barking and barking and barking, the older people will say, there's a ghost around the place. They'll tell you that the dog is sensing a ghost. I don't know how they know that. But dogs, dogs are, they have some supernatural spiritual instincts. And there are human beings who are like that. Demonic entities too, who are like that. So, the dog. Jesus says something very interesting about dogs. One day he said, don't give that which is holy unto dogs. Neither cast your pearls before the swine. Lest they trample them under feet and after that, they turn around to hurt you. We have human beings around us who sometimes the difference between they and dogs. These are human beings you give them something and they will use it against you. You give them money and they use it against you. You give them food, they use it against you. You give them clothing, they will use it against you. Give them opportunities, they will use it against you. Because they don't know something that is holy. Introduce your wife to them, they will chase your wife. Introduce your husband to them, they will chase your husband. You introduce your teenage daughter to them and the following day, although they are 67 years old, they will start pursuing your 19-year-old girl. These are dangerous elements. Don't take that which is holy and give it to dogs. And we do it all the time. We do it all the time. And, and he said, don't cast your pearls before the swine. One day Jesus had an encounter with a Syrophoenician woman. The woman came to Jesus and wanted healing for her daughter. And Jesus said, it is not meet for me to take the children's bread and give it unto dogs. And the woman said, but the dogs stay at the table, under the table, and they eat the crumbs that fall from under the table. People, there is a strange thing that is going on in the world, some strange things. There are, are two. The believers are taking that which is holy 
and they are giving it to dogs. How? Christians are marrying unbelievers. Listen, we, we marry unbelievers all the time. Our brothers are marrying unbelievers, witches and wizards. Our sisters are marrying wizards. All kinds of things. We, we bless marriages between unbelievers and believers all the time in the church. We are giving that, we, we are mixing up things. It, it's a generation of mixture. Yesterday I was supposed to, I was, I was going somewhere in the morning. I, I felt a little tired and I, I didn't want to go. And the place they wanted me to go and do something. I, I told them, I said, I beg them, they should, they should, they should let me, they should just let me keep myself. I, I told them, I said, please don't let me go and mingle my oil. Don't, don't let me go and mix my oil. Because, you know, sometimes we mix the oil. You know, we are like these people who used to be in the, in the when we were in, um, in, in some of the communities we used to stay. There were these people who were, they were foreigners. Most of them were foreigners, but they lived in Ghana. And they sell kerosene, petrol, diesel, oil. They mix up all of them and they sell them a little gear, a little gear. And when you come, they can give them to you in milk containers. They can give you a milo container full. They can give you a, a gallon full if you want. And they mingle all kinds of oil. These days in the church, we mingle all kinds of things. We, we give holy things onto dogs. And, and, and it's almost like a curse has fallen on us. The thing is like a curse. And, and we, we do all these mixtures. We mingle the oil. Just like some people do mixed wine. We mingle. Cocktail of anointings. Cocktails of personalities. He said, um, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That is what we do. You see somebody filled with the Holy Ghost, born again, tongue talking, and the person intentionally goes to enter alliance with demonic people. In the name of we are doing business. In the name of we are married. In the name of we are doing this. You know, we don't respect the sanctity of boundaries anymore. We take that which is holy and we give it to dogs. We lay hands on anybody. You know, we lay hands on magicians. I, I, I have had times when I have to pray over somebody and you just touch the person's hand and you know that Aquaya Dindro serious. No, that you can hold the hand and you can see you are holding lead. I mean, these hands are heavy because they have been they have been steeped into things. So don't give that which is holy unto dogs. Otherwise, they will turn around and hurt you. And Jesus said, Don't take the children's bread and give it to dogs. The devil has taken away the children's bread, all the prosperity, all the blessing, all the good things in life. Satan has taken them from us and given it unto dogs. So God is saying to the people of Jude, Jerusalem, I will bring against you the sword. Human beings who have wickedness and that can slay and that can destroy. And they will come and attack you. And then I will also bring against you the dogs. And these dogs will tear and the dogs will devour. There was a prophecy against Jezebel. And God spoke through the prophet Elijah. He said, Jezebel, you will not die a natural death. In the field of Jezreel, where you killed Naboth and took his vineyard, you will be destroyed in the same place. And the dogs will eat you up. Jezebel truly died because her own soldiers took her and threw, her own eunuchs took her and threw her down. She died and by the time Jehu said, go and pick up the woman and bury her because she's the daughter of a king. By that time, the dogs have eaten up her body already. I pray that God will not give your body as a prey to dogs. May God not give your body as a prey to dogs. And, and, and this is where, this is where the Another thing about the dogs coming, the Bible said a man like Stephen, when he died, the Bible said that it was devout men that carried his body to go and bury it. Now, some believers die and dogs go and bury them. 
excuse me the use of that word dog because it's a very dangerous word to use but a believer dies and sometimes unbelievers carry them and do all kinds of things to them they tell them no i remember i went to this funeral and they told me they said you know what we want you to only preach but you will not see where they, we bury him because because of the tradition this man must be buried at a certain time of the night and they must bury him at a place where you the pastor will not see i said i will not preach i don't do mixed oil i'm not preaching i refuse to preach another pastor went and preached anyway because there are pastors who have no taboos everything goes with them. everything goes for them but i refuse to do it anyway but you know people i pray that the day you die strange people will not come for your body I, I i i tell my wife that the greatest legacy my father left for me is that this man was an idol worshiper who got converted in his 70s and and he followed christ throughout his life and when my dad passed i was waiting to see whether any idol worshipers will appear and say this body is theirs none of them appeared of course they know the, they know his son no, no, when? No, no. I mean, the, no. You, you come and see what you don't want. No, nobody stepped there. And I told my wife, I said, praise the Lord. My mom passed. Nobody came. We did it the way we wanted. My wife's dad passed. We did it the way we wanted. Her mother passed. We did it the way we wanted. At least our parents fought the war against scavengers. The Bible said, where the carcass is, there the eagles will gather. Our parents fought that war. I, I pray that those of you that are standing here, Hira Baba, Hira Baba, Hira Baba, Hira Baba, the day you die, there will be no question about who owns your body. That the body of Christ will have access to your funeral, have access to your body, and they will bury your body the right way, but dogs will not eat up your body. The dogs will eat up your body and that is exactly what the dogs did to Jezebel's body okay let me give you the last scripture and I'm done Psalm 22 the verse number 12 to 21 Psalm 22 the verse number 12 to 21 many bulls have come past me strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round about and you know when he talks about these bulls he's not talking about real bulls he's talking about demonic entities principalities and powers and he's also talking about human beings who have got animal instincts because them bulls he said many bulls they get upon me with their with their mouths and as a revenue and as a revenue or roaring lion i am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Verse number 15. My strength is dried up like a pot shed, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. The dogs have come past me about. Sometimes you can just see that dogs, people that are unholy, unrighteous people that are destructive you can't trust them full of profanity and evil the other day i wrote a note to a certain friend of mine who is a pastor i told him i said sir these days i feel like being alone i told him the world has become very evil i told him sometimes you, you just feel like you want to run away you you feel like you just want to hide somewhere because everywhere you pass there's some kind of evil. I don't know whether you've been there before. John wrote and he said the whole world lies in darkness. I pray that anybody who is surrounded by dogs in your family, in your business place, sometimes even in the church space, may the Lord deliver you from the sword and from dogs. And the way you deliver yourself from the sword and dogs is number one, prayer. Number two, prophecy. Number three, power. And number four, purity. Everybody say prayer. Everybody say power. Everybody say prophecy. And everybody say purity. 
They are the things you use to deliver yourself from the dogs. I want somebody to stand to your feet this morning. And I need you to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, deliver me from the sword. Deliver my family from the sword. Deliver us from dogs. Deliver us from dogs. And from beasts. And from strange people. With animal instincts and tendencies. This is action. Pray. Pray. Can we sing Emmanuel in the background while they are praying? Emmanuel. Come on, keep praying. They'll be singing Emmanuel in the background. sword. We will draw every sword. Listen. Listen. Let me take these two prayer lines. The other day I was doing a prayer meeting and a gentleman came and he said that person just died. 
that person just died. That person just died. That person just died. And she said, they've all died. I'm the only person left. And she said, Pastor, I'm afraid. For such a person, it is likely a sword is in the family. And it's slain from one person to the other. There is someone here today who is scared. When we start praying, stand in front here. Number two. So, the first thing we are praying is that we are stopping every sword that is moving in our family. Every sword that is moving in our ministry, our place of work. A pastor told me recently, he said, Brother Sul, can you come? Just come and pour oil and pray over my church because I don't know what is happening. My leaders and my elders are just dying. And the members are running away from the church. He said, some of them to tell me, they say, Daddy, we want to come to the church, but we are scared. I come against every soul in your family every sword in your business every sword in your ministry and a spirit or any individual with a sword that is just killing and murdering we ask in the name of jesus let every sword the contract of the sword is terminated in the name of jesus somebody come and scream with the loudest shout and let god touch your life so that is the first one we are praying. The second one we are praying is that there's only one thing you can do with a dog. If dogs invade your territory, you can either kill the dog or drive away the dogs. Many of us have too many dogs around us. Dogs. Bring up that thing in Deuteronomy, sorry, in Revelation 22. The verse number 15 again. Revelation 22 verse 15. Without are dogs. That means dogs are not supposed to be in the city. Many of you don't have the courage to deal with dogs. I notice that in this world, if you are too nice, you may die early. Or you will be contaminated until you can't express yourself. There is a story about Smith Wigglesworth, that great church father, or father of the revival of the end time. Smith Wigglesworth was sitting in a train, and he saw a certain man. This man was coming to sit on the train, and a dog was following the man. And the dog's name was Bobby. So the man was telling the dog, Bobby, go back. And the dog was still following him. Bobby, go back, and the dog was still following him. Bobby, go back, and the dog was still following him. He sat in the train, and Bobby was trying to come up. And the man shouted, Bobby, go back! And the dog ran. Smith Wigglesworth was sitting in the train, he shouted, that is how to treat the devil. You scream at the devil. You don't keep begging the devil and say, Bobby, go back. Somebody today, you want to drive every dog out of your environment. I'm talking about the, the dogs. Now, bring it back. For without our dogs. And I didn't write the Bible. So I don't know where to put the commas and the full stops and the semicolons and so on and so forth. But I'm telling you, if you gave me my own way to punctuate this scripture, I will make it for without our dogs color and i'll consider the sorceress and the whoremongers and the murderers and the idolaters and all those who love and make lies as dogs because truly that is what they are every sorcerer is a dog because if, if you know the amount of sorcery in dogs whoremongers what is more immoral than a dog? Murderers, dogs they can kill. Idolaters, you should see dogs. 
and other kind of animals involved in idolatry. Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, the dog is the one that can be walking around you and behave very nicely, but the next minute it will bite you. First of all, you are stopping every sword from killing in your family or your place of work. If you are standing there and you know that the destruction is coming close to you, I want you to stand in front here. And if you know that you are surrounded, you are in a company of dogs. Everything around you, you can just see dogs all over the place. Human beings that are intended to just tear you up. You also stand here. We are praying for 10 minutes and I should be done. Do we do this song, Peace? Peace. Peace. Um, how do they sing peace? Um, I will worship the Lord for he is something, 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 something. Okay, give me just the instrument for now. Pop, no, let's start. Just the instrumentation. Pop, pam, 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 pam. Come on, scream like your voice is yours and pray. Come on, the intro, just go with that. Somebody now start praying. All right, if it shall we go pick up the song. Those of you in front here, lift up your hands and pray. Somebody pray, I can't hear you. When I lay hands on you, just go back and continue praying. When trouble blow, Jehovah see, Jehovah know, He is my peace. The Lord is mighty. The Lord can Come on, I want to hear somebody pray. Is my peace when sorrow me Jehovah sees Jehovah is like the bread, like the bread. I need to eat Jehovah sees Jehovah.
Let's keep praying. Thank you, Papa, for being there for all of us. I want to do something. Lift up your hands. You know what? All of us come to church on Sunday, but all of us are not in the same place. Give me five minutes, and the microphone will be out of my hand. But there are some 12 people for whose sake this meeting was organized. Six of them are delivered from a terrible sword. A terrible sword. Then, number two, another six are delivered from the sorcery of dogs. I want you to lift up your hands. And I want to ask the Holy Ghost to pick up the 12 people from the congregation 
The Spirit of God will fall on them wherever they are. And ushers, bring them to me. Take it wherever you are. Now, now, be loosed from the terrible sword. In the name of Jesus, I command the terrible sword to be withdrawn. Bring them to me. Terrible sword. I command you be, this, be, be withdrawn. Be withdrawn. The sword of wickedness that is slain from one coast to the other. We withdraw the sword and we declare enough, 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 enough. Let the plague cease. Let the plague cease. Dabasia. Let the plague cease. The power of the sword is broken. Bring me that woman. The power of the sword broken. We terminate the contract of the sword. I'm left to some three people somewhere. Let the power of God find them. I need an usher around me. Thank you. And I pray right now. Let the voice of sorcery, the voice of sorcery, the contamination of the dog, the contamination of the dog, we command it now. Let the contamination of the dog, the sorceries of the dog, the murders of the dog, the pollutions of the dog, the scavengery of the dog, let it leave your life now in the name of Jesus anybody under the sound of my voice who is under any form of hypnosis, divination, witchcraft, enchantment, anybody who has been charmed. I demand your freedom. There are still two people I need here in front. Let the power of God touch them wherever they are. Oh. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. I'm not a prophet, but I can tell you something. Many of us are standing in this building today who are not ourselves. Something has literally charmed you. You are not in control of your own mind. If you are here under the sound of my voice, and you know you are not yourself, this service must give way to the second one. I want to challenge you if you are nowhere very important to go after this meeting. Hang around. Some people will come around for the second service. Even if it means you should sit outside, sit outside. I pray for your deliverance. I pray for your victory. There are still four people who must come to the front of this assembly. are still some three. Jesus, come on, take it. Somebody lift up your hand and thank God today. Talk to him. You are loosed from sorcery in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for them. I ask that you touch their lives. We withdraw the power of the soul. And we destroy the power and the force of the dog. Any dogs that have surrounded them, we pray in Jesus' name for their release. In the mighty name of Jesus. We drive away the dog. We command the dogs out of your environment and out of your life. In the name of Jesus. The dogs out of your ministry. The dogs out of your church. The dogs out of your business. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord bless you mightily. And I pray in Jesus' name that you will fulfill God's counsel in your life and no beast. In the second service, I'll be talking about the fowls of the air and I'll talk about the beast of the earth. And we shall pray. But I want you to, this morning, remember 
the books that were shown to us. There are five books. Enforcing Prophetic Decrees, Volume 2. Don't Fight the Process. Understanding the Prophetic. And the Snare of Indifference. That is Lukewarmness. And Beyond the Valley. Mastering the Test of Faith, Love, and Character. And all these books are very consistent with the character and the ministry of the Archbishop, our Papa. So you want to make sure that you look for the books and then get it in a pack like this. Now, a pack like this is 1,000 Ghana cities and you want to look for it. The other day, I was trying to find out how do you price a book? And the author of the article I wrote said, no book has got a price. He said the price is made of many things. Number one, the content of the book, but above all, the person who is writing the book, the weight that is behind the book that you are reading. When you pick up a pack of a book like this, you are not just buying a book, but you are just appreciating and you are honoring the life of our spiritual father, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. And we thank God for what he has birthed in the body of Christ, and I pray in the name of Jesus that you will end up with a pack of this book in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Lift up your hand, and I want you to just give God the glory and honor God's mighty name. Somebody come on, lift up your hand, just thank God as we invite Bishop Obodai to take over the service. God bless you mightily. Hallelujah. Please put your hands together for Reverend Eastwood Anaba. You may be seated in the wonderful presence of the Lord. One more time, let's acknowledge the presence of our Papa in the house. Amen. It's time for tithe and offering. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 8. The Bible declares that here men who die receive the tithe. But he who lives forever is the one who witnesses and keeps the record. So please come forward with your tithe. This is the last but one Sunday of the year. Next week is the final closing Sunday of the year. You don't want to end the year carelessly. Come forward with your tithe. Lift up an offering that honest God. The Bible said, He who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. He who sowed bountifully will reap bountifully. How you want to end the year is your choice. If you want to end the year with a bumper harvest, an abundant overflow of God's blessing, then give bountifully. Please pray over your tithes, speak over your offerings as you come forward. Pray over it, speak over your offering. If you have any special seed you want to give, you can bring it forward also. Pray over it. Pray over it. That this seed will bring you the increase you need. That this seed will bring you the increase you deserve. That this seed will break every limit placed over your finances in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, by our seed this morning, 